Hi guys, David here. In today's video, we're going to learn how to make a five board bench. And the first piece I want to cut out is the top of the bench. Now you can make it whatever size you like. I'm going to make it about 40, 45, which is about comfortable for most people. So I'm going to take my meter, measure along here, I think 40 centimeters looks nice. And with my square, but you want to mark down here as well, because we want to try and get this cut as straight as we can. If you want to know more about sawing wood, I'll put you a link up here, and you can see a video about how to saw straight. Okay, to hold down my workpiece, I'm going to use the bench hook. I've got a vise here, I'm just going to hold it in the vise. You don't have to hold it in a vise. You could always put a clamp on it or just hook it on the edge of your bench, as the name implies. I'm going to put this over here. So I'm going to start on the waist side. This is my workpiece. I'm going to start on the waist side of the cut with a push stroke, using my thumb to guide me. And I want to look down here on this line that I'm 90 degrees in this plane. And now I'm going to start dropping my elbow on the line like this and cut all the way through. And tear the grain. So this piece that we just sawed off, this is going to be the top of the stool. I'll just put that to one side. So the next piece I'm going to cut out is going to be this stretcher. There's two stretchers like this, which connect the legs and the top together and keep everything strong and stable. And these are the same length as the top of your stool. So now I'm going to mark out the same size as before, 45. Now, if you just had a random board and it doesn't really matter the length, you could just put it there and make a mark like this. Now I'm going to cut out while we're cross cutting two pieces for the leg. And you see I wrote 20 centimeters here. It's about an average height for a small footstool like this. So we're going to measure a leg 20 centimeters. At one point, I just want to point out to you is don't mark everything and then go and cut it out because the thickness of your saw is going to change your, your measurements. So mark a piece, cut it out, mark a piece, cut it out. And another one the same. And I'm aiming, if you could just zoom in here a second, I'm aiming that the line will remain. And I can always remove material, because that's what we're doing all day long in woodwork, we're removing material. If I cut the line, it's going to be smaller by the thickness of my saw. If the line remains, the worst comes to the worst, I can plane a little bit off, I can sand a little bit off. Removing material is less of a problem than trying to add a little bit of material, especially on the length of a board. So now I need to cut the stretchers that we spoke about earlier. I'm going to make them about six centimeters wide. I wouldn't go any less than four and a half on a small stool like this. Six will make it very strong. You could go wider, no problem. So I'm going to mark six here. And I'm going to mark six back here. Now, you could just use your hand like this and guide yourself a line. Or take another piece of work that you know is straight enough and light on those two markings and make a line. Now this needs to be a long rip cut. What's it mean a rip cut? I'm cutting along the length of the grain. And this is generally harder than cutting across the grain. Some saws like this one, I've written on it rip, I've sharpened this one for rip cutting. Uh, but I understand most people don't have a rip saw. If you're just beginning, maybe your saw looks more like this. This is like just a cheap DIY saw. 
but it's great. So let's have a go at doing it with a saw like what you guys have at home and see how it comes out. Nice and straight next to the line and the line remains. And now, drop my elbow a bit. You can see, look, I wandered off the line, it lost 90 degrees completely, but it doesn't matter because it's still oversized. Now I can straighten that up with a chisel, I can straighten it up with a plane. The worst comes to the worst, you could straighten it up with a block of wood and some sandpaper. So my, my piece of wood has one straight edge on it. So I don't have to use this edge, which I just cut not very nicely. We can use this straight edge. I marked my line. I've got another big eye here, but I'll get to that at the end. There we are. Now we're into that eye. So I'll just go slowly here. Okay, so as you can see, this cut didn't come out very nicely. This one wandered off the line a bit. So I want to straighten the two of them up the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold them together like this. And I'm just going to use the hand plane to get them both parallel and straight. Got here five and a half, six. So we just need to take a bit more off here. So I'll just check for squareness, and that all looks great. So these are both the same now. So the stretchers are ready, and now we need to mark out the legs to accommodate the stretchers, like this. We need to cut out these notches which will make a much stronger joint with more surface area so the leg won't wobble. So the size of this notch depends entirely on your stretchers. So you can hold the pair of them together, put the stretcher on the top and just make a little mark with my 90 degree angle more clearly, like this, and the same on the other side. Now I need to know how deep it's going to go inside, like this, so it's just the thickness of the material. So I can lie that up parallel on the edge here, and make a mark, make a mark. Now I'm just going to carry that line across. Okay, so this material needs to be removed. Now you might want to carry those markings around to the other side. This will be a rip cut and this is a cross cut. I generally do my cross cut first so it doesn't accidentally split this whole piece off. If you have a back saw, a saw with a back on it, can be any old back saw, you'll get this little cut here more accurate with a back saw. It's got smaller teeth and it's got a back to keep it straight. I'm assuming you don't have a back saw and I'm just going to do it with a cross cut. Follow the line down. Like this. Can you see here it's not exactly square my saw went at a bit of an angle and it's not and the stretcher won't sit squarely there so I need to just clean a bit of material off here okay so you can do this with a block of sandpaper a block of wood with some sandpaper or a chisel or a rasp or whatever you've got that can remove material just check it for squareness if you look here there's a little bit of light shining through so it means I need to take a bit off this upper corner. Now I'm cutting across the grain. It'll give me less problems. So that one's fine. So I'm just going to go over all of these and check that they're all 90 degrees. You might want to look how, 
how does your piece fit in there? If it all fits nicely or if you needed to take off maybe a bit from here. This is the one where my saw didn't go so straight. There we are. Great, so that all fits nicely. Just to save time, because we're only making a video here, I've got a mitre saw. I'm just going to chop these corners off on the mitre saw. So now we're going to start assembling. And I can put this until that cut and then it'll be the same distance from the end on all of them, like that. And I can put this leg the same and then lay this stretcher on the top. But as you see, it's all a bit wobbly. Now, I don't like things when they're wobbly like that. So what you could do, you could use a jig like this just to hold things straight. If you don't have jigs like this, just lie everything up. Maybe all this is in your way a little bit. So just line this up, put it in place, and I'm going to mark a line approximately up the middle of this one, like this. I'm going to mark a nail here and a nail here. So because everything's wobbling around, it's not very comfortable. What you can do now, you can just lie this piece on the bench, take a nail. Now, I've chosen a nail that's about twice the thickness of the material, you see? So it'll go through one piece and still be in about two centimeters into the other piece. So with my nail doesn't split the work because I'm close to the end here, I'm just gonna give it a tap on the end. There's a whole video, there'll be a link up here about nailing things together. So by partially assembling it here on the table, saves me a lot of grief with everything wobbling around up in the air. Now I've just put that piece of wood under there to give this a bit of support when I'm hammering the nails in. I can't use the other stretcher because I've already partially put the nails into there. Now I just line everything up. Like so. Flip it over and put the second stretcher. Now here I've got a bit of a gap. I must have cut a bit too much off, but I'd rather, if you can see this, that the stretcher is going to be flush with the top. It's going to be much stronger that way. I can always drop a little bit of wood into that gap if I need afterwards. There we are. Now we need to just put on the top. And to do that, you can mark yourself a line where is the middle of this material, like this, just draw a line, and the same over here. I'm using my finger as a guide. If I look here, about the middle of the leg, it's about here and over this side, about the middle of the leg, it's about here, and just join that up with a straight line. Don't worry about 90 degrees here, more important that you're in the middle of the leg. Mark a line here, and the same over here. So now I just need to nail around these edges, make sure I've got things as straight as I can, like this, and I'm going to pop a nail into the stretcher here. Just check things don't move around when you're bashing in your first nail. Knock your hammer a bit, look it's in line still. There we are. So now, where can I go? I'll go in here a little bit further away from that eye. I'm just going to pop a couple more nails in here to connect to the leg. Now 
Now you can knock your nails in. Also a little crooked if you like. If you knock them in at a bit of an angle like this, they actually hold. Oops, so there is it. They actually hold stronger. Because if the nails are like this, it's hard for them to come out. If they're straight, they can come straight out. Now you could, if you like, you could have put some glue in and make it all even stronger. But in my experience, this is very strong. It's not about to fall apart. Maybe we'll just put one more nail in the middle. There we are. So, there you have it. What remains is for you to sand all the corners. There's a video on my channel all about how to sand wood by hand. So you can go and have a look. You can sand all this up. You can give it a coat of oil. There's also a video about that, incidentally. And, uh, or you can paint it, whatever you like. But that's it, a five board bench. Okay guys, so there you have it, a five board bench. Now, you can make it in whatever size you like. But just remember, if you get taller, maybe use slightly thicker material for the legs and wider stretchers the taller you get so your legs aren't going to wobble around like this. In this height, this is fantastic. So there you go, a five board bench. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out the other videos on my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!